Welcome to episode number 32 of uh, our series here where we're streaming, programming a uh, an NES game live from scratch on Twitch. Let's get started. Spent 15 minutes or 10 minutes dealing with poor internet connectivity. So let's not waste any more time. Um, all right. So... When we left off last time, we had gotten the asset tool, parsing the map properly, and we were able to scroll through the map um, in the asset tool and export that out to the NES, where we could then actually see the map in the game. Um, so when I launch this, Here's our map scrolling through. And again, the name table here is getting updated as we scroll. And we can see that it is following. If we go to a tile and actually look at our map, you can see that we are following the actual map layout that's here in tiled. And it's smoothing smoothly. Uh, scrolling which is good um, so that was all pretty good I was happy about that we are at a point there there's one thing I want to address before we get to the palettes which is that for some reason when you pause the game it doesn't actually seem to pause the scrolling code so we should get to that and then, um, and then we'll get to loading the pallets and figuring out what's going to make the most sense for this. So, let's go to the uh, assembly code here and just take a look at the NMI code here to see what it's doing when the game... I think it's just that if it's not in a state that's... Let's see. So if it is load new game state, it is going to check next state. Otherwise, it goes to done with PPU. Um, probably want to do the same thing here. We say uh, paused, I think it is. Let's see. Can I... Uh, Go to the definition of that. <clears throat> yeah, so it's paused. So if I if it's this, this should be compare, not C no, whatever that is. Range not equal to check next state. Um, we'll say check next state two really creative um, labels here jump process gameplay state this is check next state 2 this is our compare and then this is this out for a second. What was I doing here? Saying if if it is not load new game, then go it's not equal to load new game, then go to check next state. Otherwise go to done with PPU. Title screen should be going to if it's not the title screen, then it shouldn't be doing this. So this is the title screen code. Um, so you can just do let's say process title screen. Paused. 
branch if not equal to um, check next state two can't spell and this should jump to done with PPU and I guess I, I guess we can actually do this because realistically it's like if it's not title screen if it's not load new game load new game would mean we want to go to the check done with PPU this this whole thing is a little wacky hold on a second so we have title screen code right so let's do that first let's say <clears throat> If the game state is title screen, then jump to that. And then the reason we're doing this was because it was too far to jump to done with PPU. So we'll make that like the default case of what needs to happen here. So we can get rid of this. So that's the title screen, that's game state, or, or gameplay state, right? Um, so if we, uh, playing game would be the next one, playing game, branch of equal to process gameplay state, um, and then anything else, really, we just wanted to say done with PPU because we shouldn't be updating anything. This is the title screen. This is we're playing the game. And then we're actually doing the scrolling. So if it's paused or we're loading or something like that, we don't want to be processing this. So I think that's okay. And then... See if that actually pauses now. Okay, so it it's turning off. It's interesting. It's actually turning off the rendering. So let's see. So what we want is we want play game state, which is. Hmm. Doing the interrupt and processing scroll. So really the only thing we would want to do, I guess, here, so we say, okay, if it's paused, not exactly the same as just not doing any of this stuff we want to say okay we still want to do this we still want to set up the registers and get ourselves appropriately set up for a DMA copy for the sprites we want to skip the scrolling so we say um, load a, uh, what is it called? Game, is it just game state? Game state, and then compare game state. I haven't used these in a while, yeah. Uh, paused, branch of equal, or branch of not equal to, uh, process scrolling, and then jump otherwise to, let's see. I'm going to skip all of that stuff and go right to skip row load. Process scrolling is undefined. Yeah, I've got an extra S. Okay. <clears throat> so. 
let's see here. Okay, nothing should be processing for the controls. Obviously, we got to stop the sprite from being able to move down there, but you know, not not our problem right, right bleh, not our problem right now that we want to be dealing with. The main thing was just to make the pause actually pause the game. Okay, great. So that's good. That was what I wanted to do. Um, that's weird. I have Discord still running. That shouldn't be running. So now in the asset tool, let's take a look back at our meta tiles that we're generating. So the meta tiles, let's take one that's actually properly formatted. So we have this meta tile that was created from this PNG. We've got this palette of colors. I know this dark blue is not going to work properly because of the fact that that's the background color. If we change that, it's going to change all of the color, all of the background colors. But the main thing is, are we dealing with the palettes? So where are we doing the export? I don't remember what we actually are exporting at this moment. We are exporting the character data. And we have that filler. But I don't think we're actually exporting the palette files. It's the sprite entity entities that's the assembly code that gets generated for our sprites um, okay so the only thing I think we're actually doing anything with palettes is sprites I remember we we had done some code there where we were exporting the palette we're not doing it anymore. Okay, so I guess what we need to do is when we write out our meta tiles, we want to write out the palettes that correspond. So we want to write a <clears throat> I want to write a file that provides us a way of looking up the palette data and then I mean we got to figure out how we're going to handle this because as we've talked about there are only four palettes that that can be loaded at any time and then also the palettes themselves can only be loaded in a certain way so if you look at um, this again so each byte controls a palette of 32 by 32 pixels or a 4 by 4 tile. So um, I think it's, it's divided into four 2-bit areas. So if we go back into this, if we have our meta tile, which is 4 by Four. I mean, that's more than each byte controls the palette 
a 32 by 32 pixel or four tile by four by four tile part and it's divided into four two-bit areas in the area covers 16 by 16 pixels or two by two. okay so what it's saying is that it's it's and this was why I had picked this size for the meta tiles was that every byte subdivides and I'll kind of show the correlation every byte subdivides the meta tile of the four tiles by four tiles into these two by two tile areas with each one of these being represented by two bits in the byte so if this is our byte one two three four five six seven then the first two bits is one of these the second two bits another one third two bits uh, one two three four five six seven eight right so we have four right we have this one to this one this one to this one this one to that one and that one to that one presumably we'll figure out the exact order um as we actually mess around with this uh, but the idea is that we now have the ability to control the colors that are going to be used in a more granular way than we were doing before or, or i should say we're doing now where we've just loaded hard-coded a palette into the system um, so what we need to do now the fact that we're using 32 by 32 um, meta tiles is somewhat interesting because the the way so so it does work nicely because we've we've forced ourselves to be properly aligned to this byte that controls the palette data so we're generally not going to be having any issues uh, where we have to do a lot of logic, I don't think, to handle loading new tiles from other meta tiles uh, because we've effectively kind of simplified the boundaries of where these tiles live and, and how those bytes should align if we've done it right. Um, we shouldn't have any situations where this, these four tiles are actually one of the bytes, but we'll, we'll see um, if I didn't screw it up. If I did, I mean, we just have to realign the way that the data is written to the name table. But, um, and then, you know, this gives us the opportunity to actually use slightly more colors because each of these can have a different palette that's being used so we could potentially allow for meta tiles that are uh, more colorful um, than just you know the four colors of the palette allows but let's start off with just loading um, one palette per meta tile and then we can start playing around with it as we build the game if we need more colors or we, it's starting to look too monotonous we can start to uh, we can start to expand on that and make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, a little bit more interesting um, color-wise and dynamic-wise. I'm sure we're going to do it, but, you know, there's just so much we're already working on and still kind of covering and that I'm learning that I don't necessarily want to mess with that right now. So let's do this. So we, we have the empty meta tile. Um, I want to, for every meta tile, I want to export palette. Um, let's see. So that's the palette, and then uh, that'll be temp. So for temp, let's see, what is this? Oh, I don't want to do that here yet. I'll do it after we've updated this. We'll say, okay, replace file extension temp max file folder name. And we'll replace it with palette. And then we just write out. So now when we do our export of the meta tiles and everything else we're exporting, we should see 
Gonna, oh yeah, I have it open. We should see some palette files getting created. And we have to create a corresponding file for, or structure for the palette information because we're gonna need to be able to load that too. But let's, I mean, if I've emphasized nothing while doing this, it's you know just doing it one step at a time and not trying to do too much at once because you know when you're learning it, the more you try to do all at once, the more likely you are to mess things up. So, all right, so we've got these palette files. That's good. All right, so now we need to uh, metatile palettes. Metatile palette uh, dot ink. Same thing here, we'll add just to make sure we're oh wow that was that was a holdover from work. Why can't I type? There we go. Too much PHP today, I guess. Which is pretty much what I'd say about any day I'm working in PHP, but I'm sorry. PHP isn't that bad, but it definitely, there are moments where I am very frustrated by it. Uh, so let's see. So I want to same thing. I want to write our include file header and then after we've done that we're going to write our ink bin and our temp I'm not even sure that this is exactly right in terms of the way we would want to approach this I mean, we, we obviously need to include the palettes um, somehow, but I'm not sure that it is going to be through just a straight up set of includes. What was that all about? Why didn't it just, was it zero bytes? What happened? Did I write it to the wrong file? F print F metatile palettes. I should probably <clears throat> I should probably close that. Metatile palette dot ink. That's what happened. I didn't close the file, so the program still has the handle open, which is why there's no data. Or it looks like there's no data. It's because the process is holding onto it. So, all right, let's re export that and then take a look. All right. And so that's all correct. And then we would do this. We'd say ink bin, or well, we'd say include metatile palettes dot ink. And then we don't need this anymore. Um, although we will need the these separate palette files that we generated. <clears throat> Cannot open. I don't know why that didn't copy over. All right. So 
so when we run this, in theory, we should now see a different set of palettes loaded up. Yep, so that color there pretty clearly shows that we've got different palettes because it was that blue color before. Um, let's see what our... Yep. So, okay. So we've got different colors loaded. Um, I'm not sure. This looks like they, they might be the right... the right colors. So, hmm. Let's see, how do we want to, because I still want to have, still want to have What I think I want to do is I think I want to do something like have this be this should be well it shouldn't be zeros it shouldn't be zero D though um, so if you look at the documentation, and we've been doing this for a while, which is okay for the emulator, but um, for for the purposes of if you were to really play this on a CRT or um, if you were going to play it in a um, on an original NES, you don't want to use. I'm pretty sure. Is it zero D? Yeah, so zero it says right here, zero D should not be used. So um we can use zero F as our black. And it goes into an explanation of why that is. It's apparently something about the type of signal that it sends out is not uh suitable or not appropriate and can even apparently cause problems for um, some TVs, so. Why is this still the wrong palette? Error palette, oh, because it's not building. All right, so that's back to the blue. Um, all right, and then one thing I, I missed previously was uh, we have the explanation of, so we have the four background palettes and the four sprite palettes. So what I want to do, I think I want to do something where I make a, a, a function to load I think I want to have something to load the palette. So load palette We'll just map them as scope. And then <clears throat> the question then is how, how do we want to make this work in terms of loading the palette? What I'd like to be able to do is potentially just put an address in a variable and just have, have that be what we pass to this function um let's see i feel like we can do that because this is loading palette this is using palette as the offset address well it's not exactly what I wanted to do. Well, I know, uh, let's see. 
Oh, well, you know what we could do? We could do... We could do what we're doing with the maps where we have the high bite, low bite. maps high and maps low. And we can do that with the palette where we can use the high bite and low bite of the palette address and then use that to fetch our palette data and store what's effectively going to be just three bytes because we're going to skip the we're going to skip the um, first byte for the universal color just to not create a problem where we're accidentally overwriting because basically you can write the first color of any of these you can see that each of them have a gap in the, the address so there's it's not referencing three uh, fo4 after three here it's because if you set four it's going to change the background color which we don't really want to do so let's do that let's let's do a thing called let's see how did we do this so we said define something called palettes call one title screen and then palettes high this high bytes palettes and then palettes low is low bytes palettes I've got a I've got a I've got a um, Change my microphone setup here. Or the I have a wind screen in front of it in case I um, get too close, and and the arm of it is kind of blocking my screen in the bottom left. All right, so that should all note. Let's see what's the problem expected. Oh, yeah. 131. Yep. Okay. Symbol palette is undefined. Go to. F oh, wait. Did I modify something? I didn't. Okay. Go to 409. All right. So, clear register and set palette address. So, what I want to do here is I'm going to actually. I'm going to set the palette address that I want to load, and then I'm going to set the I'm going to set the palette, the background palette index that I want to set. So let's see, do I have anything called like param? I do. I have something called param one, so it can be param two. Actually, we need something called address param. A D D R param. This will be a two byte. All right. And then load palette. Okay. So, what we want to do is want to say um, load a, uh, what is it? Palette, palettes low x. Load A, palettes, high, X. And then we want to store that into ADR param 1 and uh, plus 1. Is that right? I always forget what the byte order is. I think I'm just deliberately blocking that out of my memory. Uh, 
let's see. Room M plus one. We set room M first. So no, we set room M plus one first for the high and then room M for the low. So reverse it. Plus one. <clears throat> Let's do this. We can even do this and just palette is undefined. Let's comment all of this out. Too far. So this should be incorrect, an incorrect palette, but that's okay. What I wanted to do was um, uh, what is it? Seven FA. That was the address I was using. I'm going to look at the debugger here. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So let me delete this and turn that back on and restart. And let's go to the hex editor and look at our memory. And we are storing. Load a f f. Oh yeah, this is the initialization, right? Okay, so load x zero. How did this bug get in here? Get out of here. Um. So we're loading. Oh, okay. I thought that seemed wrong. <clears throat> and obviously we'll need to have something where we can, um, where we can uh, define the list of palettes. So like the title screen needs to have a palette, right? somewhere defined it can't shouldn't just be hard coded like this but we'll we'll get there so run that and then step over okay so where's the hex editor so we're loading it and we're going to store it in 1d so 1 f e d so step over So, okay, so we got e, EBF9, which I assume is going to be right. So if we go to EBF9, and then what we can do is we can check to make sure that when we index into that, we actually get what we're expecting. So EB, where are you? EBF, that's not right. It's not F9 EB, is it? No. Am I looking at the wrong memory address? Perhaps. 1E and 1D. So 1F, E, and D. Oh, EB49, EB49, EB, EB4, 
F E D C B A nine. So it's zero F zero ten and twelve, which that sounds right. Zero F zero ten twelve. Yeah, okay. So that's the title screen palette, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we've loaded the address into the address parameter, and then we want to load zero and store that into param one. And then we want to jump subroutine load palette. Okay, and then what that does, well, let's go back to this for a second. So what that does is essentially this code, right? So load palette. So basically what we want to do is we want to say, <clears throat> load a adder param one x uh, actually I think we need to use y so load y zero y right because that is an index into Yeah. Yep. So need the parentheses to make that correct. And then we're going to store a in 2007 increment x increment y compare y to 3 branch of not equal to palette load. All right, there's a little more setup that has to go there, but um that's the gist of it, and then why JSR palette? Oh. Um. <clears throat> So we need to here actually do a little bit of cleanup stuff before we set this. So we want to load A with the value of 2002 to get it set. And then, let's see, so then what we want to do is depending on the value of param 1, we want to index I guess we just multiply it by four and add one. So if it's zero, we start at zero and add one. If it's one, we go to four and add one. Yeah, so, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're good there, and then we're gonna load A, uh, param one. Uh, we're going to, um, oh, that reminds me of something. We'll get to this in a, we'll get to that in a second, but, um, I needlessly complicated something uh, with the shifting we were doing, but I'll get to that in a second. So load A, we're gonna shift it left twice to multiply by four. Multiply by four to index into uh, palette memory. And then we want to uh, store a param one increment param one. I don't know why I'm putting these here. I'm being stupid. Um, I forget. Can you increment just a? No. Uh, okay, so we store it, we increment it, and then we load this. We load that is that the base address no the base palette address is 3f00 and then we want to clear carry and end carry param1 to that to get our offset and then we do that and that should be it now the only other thing we need to do is we need to transfer it uh, transfer y to a 
push A, push A. Right, push A. Because we're messing with those registers, so we want to make sure they are clean. Let's actually do it in the opposite order. Push A, and then transfer Y to A, and push A. And then we will pull A. Uh, transfer A to Y, and then pull A, and then we're good. We did in the opposite order. Um, should probably... I think I did this in a couple, yeah, so uh, modifies A and Y. It never hurts to um, have this. Uh, uses adder param one, param one, modifies A, Y, adder param one. Because I'm not gonna remember this, and I'm not gonna remember this next stream probably, if I'm honest, so better to have it here where um, where it's obvious than try to remember everything I mean I have a pretty good memory but you know eventually you just you run out of heap space in the brain all right I don't see. Um, might as well, since I'm doing this, tile x, tile y, m tile x, m tile y, temp, <laughs> it modifies everything, pretty much, okay, um, oh, and screen mem, can't forget that. Now, what I was getting at before was, so we were doing, we were doing something here where we were rotating left and we were getting a weird bug in the scrolling. And I realized it was because I wasn't clearing the carry when I was doing the rotate left. Um, and then I was just remarking to a coworker about this because he had asked how things were going with this. and. Um, he, he actually programmed on the 6502, um, as part of a job that he was doing. So he was like, why are you doing a rotate? And I said, you know what? That's a really good question. I don't know. So we don't need to do that. We can use a, an ASL. We don't actually care about the carry bit in this instance. We just want to do the multiply. And what was messing us up before is when you do the rotate left, right? If the the value of the carry is shifted on when you do on the least significant bit when you do the shift, right? But we don't care about that. We are actually just trying to do a straight up multiply, um, and so ASL will shift just a zero on, into bit zero. Bit seven is shifted into the carry, but because we're not doing anything with it, we don't care about that either so here we can just do our our shifts so we don't have to do the clear carry like we were doing before same thing here ASL right so we have our four ASLs instead of clear carry four shifts um, uh, four uh, rotates and I think that was the only that was the only place we wanted to change that. Um, I don't think it's any faster. Let's see. In terms of, I do actually have to explicitly write ASL A. Well, it looks like it knows. Um, so the length is one and timing is two. Uh, let's see. Versus a rotate left. Length is one. Timing is two. So it's it's you know cycle cyclically it's it's the same number of cycles it's the same number of bytes but we do have to do the clear carry and the clear carry does cost us what another cycle 
two two machine cycles so um that doesn't seem like a lot but we are doing this in code that is repeatedly called so it it'll definitely add up over time it's better not to have it now let's see if this got tragically broken <clears throat> uh ppu viewer so where's the debugger again run run okay so step over uh, load x0 wait a minute wait a minute oh okay yeah this is all the setup so we're loading the address into adder param 1 and adder param Oh, well, yeah, add a param one and add a param one plus one. And then we are loading zero into A and storing it into param one. And then we're going to jump into our subroutine, which is going to do a push onto the stack. It's going to transfer Y to A. It's going to push that. And then let's see. So we're going to load. Yeah, we're, we're reading 2002 to get ourselves ready to write the addresses of the palette memory that we want to write to. We are loading A with the value of param1. And then we are multiplying that. And then we are storing it and adding 1 to it, which now makes it 1, which is good because that's where we want to start. We want to start off that, that first address. We will load A with 3F and store that into 2006 and load 0 and clear carry and add 1 to it. Store that into 2006 so that we've set the address of the palette that we want to write to. And then we're going to initialize Y we're going to load y with the first oh you know what we need to initialize y to 1 because we don't want to read the first value necessarily and we're going to make setting the background a separate call for now um, so that we can explicitly set it um, so the value of zero got stored into 2007. We're going to increase it. Um, branch of not equal. So it's going to write the next palette value. And it actually should be comparing to four, but uh, we are stuck in a loop. Yeah, we're stuck in a loop because I am using compare and not CPY. I'm using CPX instead of CPY. That should be four anyway. Oh well. Uh, let's run and we'll reload. All right. Okay, so we're going, we're back into here. Let's wait. We'll step into the subroutine again. Store A. Okay. So we've stored the. Can we look at the palette? Will it show us? Hopefully, we'll see it updating as we write. Step over load by one, load the value and store it, increase, and that doesn't seem to be A to Y, pull A, and back here, all right, all right, so, well, the good news is that that looks good, we just obviously didn't set the background color properly because, um, like I said, we skipped that in order to, oh, we have a 
break point again. Um, I skipped. What are you doing? Stop. Oh, it's paused. So I skipped. Um, you can see the ship is there. The, the colors are wrong. Um, I skipped setting the palette um, entry for the background. So what we said was, OK, if this is our memory address, uh, what is it? I think it's 3F. Yeah, this is 3F00 for the first palette entry, which has these entries. This is our background color. And then these are um, the actual colors. We're saying once we actually want to index into here, and we're not going to touch this unless we explicitly set the background. So let's do that. And we can even do that in a um, pretty easy way. So we'll say uh, set background color scope. Set DG. I obviously can't decide if I want to be all caps or not. For assembly, I feel like it should be, but then I don't know. Then I my sensibilities kind of take over and I'm like, I don't really like all caps for things that aren't constants. I don't know. Anyway. Um so we'll have We'll have the color be in param one. So what we'll do is we will say, okay, so we need to clear this by reading it. And then, and then basically set the address to load three A, uh, sorry, three F zero zero, sort that into 2006 and then load a pram one store a in 2007 so pram one will have the color that we want to set the background to um, modifies a I guess it doesn't actually modify a technically uh, but It does, but it does, but it doesn't because I'm pushing it. Maybe, maybe I should be more explicit. Um, and say uses a doesn't actually modify a or y here. This actually does modify those because we're not using the stack to save them off. We could, um, but I'm not sure that we actually care about that because realistically, realistically for what we're doing, for what we're doing when we're loading a level, I'm not sure that we're worrying about anything else happening at that point. So I don't care necessarily, at least not right now. All right. Oops. 147. Wait, what? That should be returned from interrupt, not jump subroutine. Okay. And then we restart that again. Okay. Load palette. Um, let's do this, uh, load X zero F store a pram one jump some routine set BG color. Eh. <laughs> uh, that the, the, no, the debugger wouldn't be.
set BG color. Push A, set BG color, load A 2002, 3F, 0, 0, load A per M1, store A, pull A, return from interrupt. Oh, return from interrupt? Dear Lord. What are you doing? Okay, why didn't that work? dumb mistakes there we go All right now and you can see we just set that one palette value here but all the palettes now have changed that background color or that first palette entry to be to that background color so that's what we were talking about before so you really only have four colors in the sense that you have a background plus three right all right so now now the question is how hard is it going to be uh, how hard is it going to be to do what I want to do here So I think I'm probably going to end up cheating a little bit just because the title screen is still not really an asset within the system the same way that everything else is. So let's see. So meta tile palettes dot ink. Um, ideally, this would this part would be generated code two, but what we can do is we can say, all right, this is actually going to be called so we'll do, yeah, so we'll create labels for each of the meta tiles. Uh, hmm. Do we do that anywhere else for the meta tile files that we include? Don't remember. Uh, meta tiles bin, that's just raw data. I, yeah, we don't. Okay, that's fine. Okay, because all of that stuff is, yeah, okay. Um, and in theory, we, we technically probably don't even need to do it this way, but again, because we're just kind of figuring it out and piecing it together, it, it'll it'll work okay. So, let's see. And there's nothing wrong with going back and changing how your stuff works. I mean, in fact, you know, if you're not if you're afraid to do that I think then you you run the risk of writing code that gets fragile over time just because you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff that is just hanging around that you you don't want to change because even though it might benefit from a a you know a refactoring you don't want to touch it and so then because you don't want to touch it if, even if it doesn't work properly with what you're trying to do then you you end up with you know other code that has to work around that and that just starts to get really really messy right you start getting into this sort of it becomes cruft and you get this code on code that is is really um brittle and fragile and doesn't work particularly well and um, or you know it works but it's it's really hard to maintain and um, you know honestly the the best code is the least code um, it's that way it's easy to uh, troubleshoot e easy to debug easy to um, Sorry, I'm thinking about this right now. Easy, easy to troubleshoot, easy to debug. Um, 
easy to add new functionality to, easy to understand why it performs the way it does. Um, and these are all things that you need to do as you write any piece of software. So yeah, less code is generally better. Um, all right, so if it's a meta tile based on that name, am I, am I getting the name somewhere where I'm stripping the extension? Exported character ink bin uh, <clears throat> I don't think I'm doing anything where I'm actually removing the extension maybe I am Repla this is replacing the extension I mean, this is effectively doing what I want to do. So here, remove file extension. Right, so basically, Basically, I'm just doing this. I'm saying remove file extension, file name, max size, and then I forgot a comma. I don't even need the max size, do I? because I'm going backwards so don't care about that cool so now uh, dot palette there it is so now I can say remove file extension temp so that removed it, and then I'm creating my label, and then I'm writing the ink bin. Oh, drat. Outsmarted myself here. Um, I've exported it. Let's do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's do this. Let's write that after I remove the file extension, and then I can just string cat s <clears throat> temp dot palette and max size extension. Okay. Uh, What's the max size? It's max file folder name. And this is truncate. And then I don't need to do that. Because temp, okay. So I, I removed the extension, but I still needed it when I'm writing this into the file. So yeah. Is the asset tool running still? It's not, okay. So let's export that and look what that look at what that file looks like now. So basically what I've done is oh that's that's not what I wanted, so it's got the full path. Crap. Um wait a minute. They don't all have the full path. Why is why does that have the full path? Because let's see. Because that is the, yeah, because that's the file. All right, that's okay. Hmm. 
sort of. It's because I'm using um, uh, I don't know that I like that. I also yeah. I don't like that it is using the full path, but at the same point, I don't know that that really matters a whole lot. It does for this, obviously, we don't, we can't use the full path for the name there. Um, hmm. Do I have the name? Let me, let me go back to this for a second. This is the image. Should just put the name in the struct. Straight up, and then I don't have to know what the struct is holding. This is actually what we're reading from the file. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Current file. You know what? Probably can't remember if that file name is the full name. Let's see. It isn't. Okay. So that would be that would be a good starting point for us. So or a good a good way to get that because I forgot that that's a full that's a full file path name. <clears throat> so this is okay. Let's let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be. Let's just export the palette. Let's um, uh, replace file extension temp uh, max file folder name, make that a dot palette file. And then what we want to do is we want to copy into temp just the name. Because at this point, what we want to do, oops, I want the export there. What we want to do is we want to remove the file extension, write the label, and then write add the file extension back and write the include. So let's rebuild and export again. That wasn't too much more work. Export. Okay. And I don't care about the full paths because everything is essentially going to be in the path. Um, so I'd rather not have that be hard coded into these files. Okay, good. Uh, this is going to be saved. Yeah, I know there's a trailing comma. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so this is you now uh, the order matters doesn't it? Uh, blue tile. Is that the order in? I guess that's the order in. Yeah, that would be the order in the map too. Gradient uh, green tile. So those are our palettes now. This is a palette we've manually encoded into the game. Uh, let's see, so... So 
So now we shouldn't have seen any difference, but what we want to do actually think well let's do this um, <clears throat> hmm. I'm gonna move this here and then we're gonna make this um, filler tile and filler tile is going to be our all black Because what I want to do is I want to I want to do the same thing for the asset, uh, the meta tiles as we're doing with um, the actual tiles themselves and offset, but based on the based on the index right of the of the of the thing. Why didn't it load the tiles the tile screen palette now? Um, oh, because well. Not tile screen, title screen. Because it's not actually using that, it's using the index. So zero, one, two, three, four, um, load palette. So this should be four. Why is it not? <clears throat> Zero, one, two, three, four. Title screen palette. Okay. Title screen. Um, no. Load palette. Am I doing something wrong with the, the math? Maybe. Um, so pram one. Oh, yeah. I'm. I'm telling it which palette. Yeah. Okay. I forgot what I was doing here. So I, I'm loading. Pram one is the. Um, is the palette entry I'm loading it into. I want to change the palette lookup that I'm doing to four. There we go. Okay, so I was just changing the wrong lookup value. So that's good now. All right, so we're not doing anything with the so we're not doing anything to load meta tiles explicitly right now. Well, at all, because it's all in the in the char ROM. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, load new game state. Let's let's see if we can load the gradient. Let's load the gradient palette into. into palette zero. So load a zero store into param one. Load a um, load x uh, one. Load a uh, tile palette. What did I call it? Store A into uh, ADR param one plus one with a pallets low should be high pallets low x store A at our param one jump subroutine load pallet. So what we should see now is the gradient tiles should look close to what they're supposed to look like. 
Um, that's not exactly right. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this should be two, right? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so if we go back to this, uh, that's not it. This one, you can see that's reasonably close. Again, you know, the colors are slightly off because the palette used by the emulator is different than the palette we're using. We probably want to, I'm going to, I want to see if I can grab the palette used by FCUX and, um, and use that to uh, use in the asset tool so that this looks the same. Uh, but that's pretty cool. And so we should see, well, let's restart this here for a second. So now the problem is, of course, these tiles are wrong in terms of the palette that they're using because they're a separate palette. Um, but we're not actually loading that palette into any other palette position here, right? These are the background palettes. So what we would need to do is now load. So I'm wondering, let's pause this for a second. So I'm wondering if it's as simple as, well, no, it wouldn't be. I was gonna say, I'm wondering if it's simple as, okay, we've got you know, meta tile one and it's mapped to, you know, palette one, which then maps into our array of palettes, right? So in, in memory, there are the four palettes. So we have this for meta tile one, can't write this for meta tile one, this for meta tile two, this for meta tile three, this for meta tile four. I mean, we could do that. I'm thinking, I don't know. I mean, that would work. We could certainly do that. Like if we go back to the code, it's kind of, well, we'll, uh, we'll cheat here a little bit. We'll just load up all the, all the palettes. And this isn't, this isn't efficient by any means. This is just to make this work. So, and then three, we oh, actually don't even have this many right now. But basically what I want to do is first, I want to show you, we, okay, we've loaded, you know, we've loaded all the palettes the tiles and then what we can do is we can actually start oh you know what except that this is it should be this order I had cheated and set the um, <clears throat> palette entries incorrectly for the meta tiles because I was trying to get this to work without having to modify the attributes uh, for the meta tiles, but we need to do that now. So what that entails, if we go to the hex editor, and let's pause this for a second, let's go to PPU memory. Um, if we look at, the name table. Well, actually, do we do we have a start a three two three C zero? So if we go to two three C zero, that's gonna be two three C zero. That's all set to zeros for that. We could say, all right, so if we look at the name table, that it should be palette. Uh, what palette would that be? That would be palette 
3, debug, PP viewer, no palette 2. So that would end up being, because again, the it's divided up into four parts where you have your 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this is one 16 by 16. That's another 16 by 16. So this would be one zero 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 zero, um, and that would mean that this is what? So this is zero, and this is uh, one two four eight eight zero in hex. If I did that right, we should see some of the data in the map looking correct now, uh, but it does not seem to be. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's see, why is that? Can I see, does it tell me? It gives me the tile ID, but it doesn't give me well, let's make sure I'm modifying the right thing here. Okay, so that did modify it. So Oh. Why is it modifying that? 23C0 23C0 each attribute block starting at 23C0, 27C0, 2BC0, and 2FC0. Um, is it because I am looking at a different page? I guess it's possible that that's why. I mean, that would be the most logical reason. Um, 23C0, but that's the smallest, right? So if I go to 27, Two seven, where are you? So it's two B two seven C zero. I change that. What does that look like? Does that do anything? And that's probably because we're not using that address, I think. Let's see, so if we're starting at 2000, um, so we can figure this out by saying, okay, um, 2000 hex is 8192 plus 960, two three Z, yeah. Okay, so that's why that actually modified that. Now, the next, thing is okay if we're looking at this memory this is 2800 so 2800 plus 960 would be 2c0 2b00 rather right 2bc0 yeah 2bc0 sorry uh 2bc0 it's up here And that now modified. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's odd. So we're. Oh, no, we're not. No, it's not. It's not odd because we're mirroring. Um, oh, right. I don't know why I, yeah. So, right, we're mirroring, which means that we don't, yeah, which means that we, well, we're mirroring, sorry, what what's going on with my brain right now? We are mirroring vertically as opposed to horizontally. 
So Yeah, okay. Right. Sorry. So we're we're mirroring these these screens, right? Um so 2B 2BC0 is going to mo effectively modify the same palette as 2300. So if I change this to 40 and I go to 23C0 It's also four zero because it's mirrored. So we're setting this one rec this one square here to that value. So if we change this to four four. So let's see, let's say we wanted to set all four of those to the nice thing about the fact that we fix the pause is now I can change these values in real time and actually see it. If we pause the emulator, then those values don't get updated until you restart stuff. So um, I assume this is palette zero and this is palette one. If this is palette one, then oh, and that's maybe why I was getting the wrong colors. Um, so if it's palette one, what we want to do is we want to set all of these to one, so that's one, two, four, that's, so that should be five, and that should be five. <clears throat> so let's go back and change this to five, five, and you can see that that meta tile is now correct, although it's offset, which is interesting. I guess that's because of the mirroring So if we were to let's see, uh, let's see. So we we could then say um, we want to add thirty two. So that changed that one. Oh, it's not thirty two because it's right uh, because these are four by four. Let's let's restart this. <clears throat> so this would be five five. And then let's see. So that's one meta tile worth. So uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. What's, yeah, but what's interesting is that it is offset. So now uh, let's let's do look at this. If you look, well, that's going to be a real pain. So it's off by one tile. So okay. So I talked about this early on with this whole thing. Um, it's actually kind of cool that it ended up happening that way, even though I. It's more work, but it, it illustrates the point that I was making. Um, so the problem is that we are writing our meta tiles off set by eight pixels <clears throat> in a way that the meta tile doesn't align with the attribute bytes which was the whole point of choosing 32 by 32 meta tiles was that we wouldn't run into this problem um so how do we fix it so that we don't have this problem anymore we have to align our meta tile rights to the actual attribute table i'm thinking that what we would want to do is just change let's look at let's look at where we start the meta tile loading I guess what we're 
let's 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 restart and let's look at this in, in slower emulation because I need to look at and understand exactly where we're incorrectly loading the tiles. It's a little too slow. Okay. So, I mean, we are loading it right there. That looks correct. And if I write 5.5 five to that, Okay, so our initial write of the meta tiles is actually fine. It looks like what happens is as we roll through uh, the scroll and load new tiles from the meta tile that we're incorrectly offsetting yeah so you can even see it here where we've already gotten off by one full row and because we're off by one full row that then unaligns these meta tiles which we didn't notice before because the meta tiles were you know the right you know they were just whatever color they were we didn't care um all right so how do i so basically i have to fix it so that it's not loading the third row but actually the the bottom most row and I assume that I can do that when I do load level at the end when it kind of sets everything up I think I need to make this be four I think that's all I'll need to do because I think that's the problem is that it's three so it's already offset by the time we get into this code here so let's see. It's, that's looking correct. Um, let's set one of our palette attributes here and see, or it might be actually off more but at least we'll know that we went in the wrong direction. Yep, it's off even more. So instead of making that four, it looks like I need to make that two. Yep. And now that looks correctly aligned. <clears throat> yep, cool. That's pretty awesome. So now we're actually getting the right palettes and then if we, um, let's pause this for a second, we can, we can also force the palettes to be, oh, you know, so that's interesting. So is that I didn't notice that before is that a loading oh no okay that's that's a it's that's the seam of the mirroring maybe mm. Or is it every other time? Is it getting off by? It's getting off by. It's incorrectly offsetting the. Oh, this is the whole. So this is that whole issue of the fact that the screen isn't square and there are actually 30 rows and 32 columns and 
we are seeing that effect by it's right the first time through, but then the second time through we are offset by exactly two rows related to, and it's exactly related to that problem. I'm going to have to think about how we can fix that because I don't know. I'm sure there's a way. And that's what this is actually doing. It's it's actually forcing it to align even though it's technically wrong. And I didn't notice that, but if we if we reload this, you'll see that this is actually a smooth load here, but now the whole Oh no, it's not. It's actually it's actually off by so maybe I was right about using four. Maybe it needs to be let's see. Yeah, that's a full, that's a full meta tile load, but it still doesn't fix the problem, right? Because the the problem is ultimately related to it looks like that um, two row issue. So the question is, does it do the same thing? Is it gonna now be correct on this scroll around? It looks, yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Well, at least it's consistent. So so the. The problem is pretty consistent, but what I was saying was that the problem is for our meta tiles, we have eight here and seven here, but there's still there's still space here, right? There's sixteen pixels here, sixteen pixels here, and that's where every loop around we're we're off by those two rows. And I know the guys on Nintendo Age have complained about that, and well, we we've hit that problem. Um, I want to all I wanted to do before we wrap up for tonight, I think, is just get the other meta tiles to load their palette right. So um, uh, for let's see, so this tile is the blue meta tile. What is this? I think it's the blue meta tile. It's the blue meta tile, which is the first one. So um, it is this palette. <clears throat> and so that would be palette zero. So, oh, it's a, what we can actually do is say, all right, so for this is this, and then this is oh, five, five. Right. Actually, we can change this one too. And you can see what's cool is that these meta tiles have aligned nicely when we do when we do it right. Oh, and the blue is already the blue um, because it's palette zero. Um, so this is you know more like what the map should actually look like. manually encode this so we have to we have to figure out sorry I'm kind of having a good time seeing this actually all kind of look correct <clears throat> Because that actually, other than these tiles having the wrong color, I mean that's pretty much what the uh, that's pretty much what it looks like, right? So, and then the sprite has the wrong the sprite has the wrong color, but that's you know another that's a totally different palette that we need to load, and that's probably more straightforward. Um, so, I gotta figure out what we're gonna do, I gotta think about what we can do to fix the problem here of these, of these tiles being off by the two, the two, uh, rows 
see if there's a simple fix for that. There may not be, and then we have to deal with setting. I mean, it's actually not that bad, right? Because setting, setting half the attribute is just writing one byte. So if we were to look at, let's see if we can find, it's close to the bottom. kind of kludge it. Right, so that's that one, that's that one, and then this would just be five, right? Or no. That's the top part. I'm trying to see what I'm actually setting here. It looks like that sets the bottom. I mean, it really it becomes an issue when not when you're doing something like this where the tiles are the same color, but like if I go back up to here, huh. Five zero. Five five. So that's setting. I'm gonna do a little more research on what what that's actually, is that the, am I just getting confused by this mirroring here? Is that the, is that the top of, oh yeah, okay, so that's the top. So if we were to ignore anything below, like if I just put this here, right? This is our screen as it stands. So, <clears throat> Make that zero five. That's fine. Yeah, you know, that wouldn't be that hard. Like if we needed it to be zero five, or I mean sorry, five zero where we you know, or um even if you did it in in you know one one and it's not that bad. And we know that it's just alternating. So we could keep track of when we need to be setting the whole thing versus setting just half. Right. And for the bottom row, I guess it only sets the first two. What is the order that it's setting them in? It looks like it's bottom top. Yeah, so the, yeah, so it's, um, let me expand this so that the diagram, so the, the most significant bits are actually for the bottom and the or the most significant nibble right the most significant four bits here are for the bottom and this is for the top so this is a little reversed from i guess what i would have expected just in 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 my mind for some reason um but it's not undoable so i 
I'm going to wrap it here. We got some of the pallet loading stuff done. It's, you know, it's working. We have a, we have some routines to load pallets. Um, I would have liked to have gotten a little bit further, but you know, ultimately it, what it seems like we're going to need to do is I'm going to need to think about how the scrolling, um, update to the attributes is going to work. I have to think about how loading the tiles other than just having a sort of one-to-one -one mapping of the meta tile to palette to palette entry in the PPU, like I was saying before, um, if that's going to work or if there's going to have to be some sort of inter intermediary table that handles that. I'm not sure. Got to think about that a little bit. I'll look at how some some games handle that and hopefully be able to make sense of their assembly. Um, so I think I will, yeah, I'm going to wrap here. As always, thank you for watching. You can reach me on Twitter at Clairvis. Um, I will, I am uh, going to post the recording for this on YouTube as I have been. Um, feel free to comment and ask questions. Uh, I'm on Nintendo Age on the Discord. And uh, yeah, and I will see you on Thursday uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we will uh, keep working on it. See you later, and thanks for watching.